and I'm Lanes, and together we're the Aft Deck, where each week we recap an episode of Bravo's hit reality TV show, Below Deck. So this week we've got some news. What's our news? Our news is that Captain Lee has announced he's officially leaving the show, so he's retiring from Below Deck. We've got two more episodes, and he's gone. It's sad. It is. And I learned that uh, we've got a Captain Kerry Tithridge who's taking over, and I think he was season one. Captain Kerry is coming back. Captain Kerry. So that'll be interesting to get to know him. Yeah. Hopefully he's good. He, I mean, he's got big boots to fill. Huge. Or what are the boat shoes called? Well, he wore some yellow ones in this episode. Yeah. Do they have a special name, those boat shoes? Deck shoes? Deck shoes, he's got aren't big they? big deck shoes to fill. Yeah. So. Lanes and I decided that after this season, what are we going to do? Well, we were thinking of going on with Below Deck Sailing Yacht. Season four. Covering that or? I think that's what we're going to do. But if you want us to go back and do episodes one through to sort of 10 of this season, let us know. And you can contact us on the aft deck pod at gmail.com. Or on Instagram via the underscore aft deck underscore pod. And one last thing before we get into the episode, Lanes and I are creating an independent podcast. So if you'd like to support us, we do have a support link on our website, or you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash the aft deck pod, and you can just pick a coffee there. That would be amazing. Thanks, guys. So this week we're recapping Season 10, Episode 16, The Thunder from Down Under, Part 2. Interesting. It's got to be about Ben. Yes. (laughs) So in this episode, we finish up the charter with Angel, who by some not-so-divine intervention turns up turning into an actual angel of a charter guest. There was a reason for that, though. Mm -hmm. And the crew let their hair down on a huge night out. And the onboard boat mancers experience the high seas. Very well done. So let's get into it. It's the second day of charter and it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Tonight, the guests are wanting St. David to turn into Club David. They're wanting a big club atmosphere. Captain Lee says, well, you can rock on without my ass." <laughs> I had in my notes, Satan is asleep on the tramp. (laughs) And Captain Lee, this is, this is unusual. I don't think he's ever done this before. And I feel like he's just, he's really relaxed. He's letting loose. He's hanging out with the guests when he doesn't have to. And he decides, let's just set him adrift into the ocean on a, on a line, but let's set him out. He's like, how, how far does that line go? Let's see. Off he trots. And so everyone's really happy about it. The guests are like, yeah, do it. The crew's like, yes, I'm on board. And they just let him drift out behind the boat. (laughs) He's still got his drink in hand. I can't do distances as well. So I'm going to guess 750 metres. I'll go with that. I was just saying ages away. Yeah. It's not like (laughs) just that. Like he's like. He's ages away. He's ages away (laughs) drifting out to sea. Still asleep. Tony's worried that he's going to get a bit hot. Yes. Isn't it so cute? He's like, oh, he might need a drink. He might be bit, be getting a bit hot out there. Do you think he legitimately was concerned or was that his way of saying, I want to splash him? <laughs> He's loving his life. He gets the jet ski. He goes out there and he does this gnarly turn and then Angel's just drenched. Yeah. And he got consent from Captain Lee too. So Captain Lee was like, yeah, let's give him a douche. Yes. And all the guests were like, yeah, go for it. They're all having fun. Yes. So Tony wakes him up. He tries to get on the jet ski and then he does this huge fall back into the water, which was more karma, and um, brings him back onto the deck. It's probably like Angel did deal with that really well. I thought that he was a good sport, so I'll give him props for that. And it was the first time that I didn't want to throttle him. Yes. You know, he did well. Agree. Yep. So we're at dinner. Well, Rachel's prepping for her amazing Japanese dinner. I want that dinner. My, that was their favourite. They just loved everything. My standout dish was Kobe beef with uncooked quail egg. And then she cooks the egg at the table. In front of them. <gasps> that was amazing. I don't know how I'd go with a quail egg, but I liked the uh, I'd be concept. fine with it cooked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not eating it raw. <laughs> no, me neither. She did say that the last time she did this menu, she had so 
many courses that she had to get an IV because she blacked out. Yeah, that's intense. So she cut down the amount of courses this time and just went for quality over quantity. But even though I think the the kind of chef that she is, her quantity would still be quality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so we also find out at dinner that, ta-da, Satan has lost his voice. (laughs) It's so good. It is so good. Everyone's giving him a ribbing yes. because he can't rib back. No. Nah. This is where Fraser says, actually, these guests are quite lovely and they've just been overshadowed by this hideously demanding asshole. So true, Fraser. Yeah. And He's so very eloquent. He is. And everyone is actually enjoying themselves now. And yeah. I think that's why, yeah. They're having a nice dinner. And yeah. meanwhile, we cut to Haley and Ty- Tyler are cleaning the cabins. And Haley, in pure Haley sunshine, asks Tyler if he shaves his pubes. <laughs> and he says, "Yeah, he's bare. Absolutely, absolutely. I think all the kids do it these days." <laughs> what? I I don't know the answer to that, but I don't think that a full bush is in. Okay. Exactly. That's yeah. So yeah. I I don't think the full bush is in. I don't know what is trending right now. I guess we all have our preferences. I think it's safe to say we've gone away. We've moved away from the Brazilian landing strip, and we've gone to pretty much newborn wombat. <laughs> newborn wombat. <laughs> I used to like wombats. <laughs> anyway, if you guys know, let us know. Or not. (laughs) Dinner's a hit. Yes. And they go to the club. Yeah, so Club St. David begins. They've got these amazing dances. And you know what it made me think of? I was like, you know how last week you really wanted the steel drummer to steel drum me to work? Yeah. I was like, I'll take them. If they dance me to work, uh, dance me home, dance me up in the morning, I'd be much happier. Dance me up in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) The DJ's cool as well. They get into it. They're having fun. Yeah, they have a good night. Rachel's five Red Bulls deep. She's not going to sleep tonight. She's done her big Japanese and she's got like five Red Bulls into it. I would be having I, I would be having heart palpitations. Same. That happened to my flatmate once. He woke me up in the middle of the night and said, I've had five Red Bulls and I think I need to go to hospital. What'd you do? I said, yep, yeah, go. <laughs> anyway. The segue. crew are dancing with... The guests and Ben is giving Leanne the eyes. Yes. Such a cheeky face. And he really wants her out from behind the bar and wants her to come and dance. She doesn't do it, so he goes and gets her. Yep. And they have a nice little dance. Yep. And Katie is judgmentally watching them on the dance floor. I'm a bit done with Katie. I feel like the crew had a just as good a time, or maybe that's not we just we saw more of the crew having a party than the guests at this point. Yeah. He's admitted that he likes playing with fire and I think he's just lit that spark. He's lit the spark. And we cut to, or they cut to him later, telling Camille on the phone, sorry, I couldn't take your call. I was... um, Entertaining the guests. Dancing. Dancing. (laughs) Then he says to camera after that, and I quote, I didn't tell Camille about Leanne because nothing's happened yet. Yeah. Yeah. So it's in his head. He it's, wants something to happen. Nothing's happened yet. Like that's a telling thing to me. And he's just sort of seeing if it's going to turn into something or not. The entertainment leaves. So they go. Yeah. And Crystal, who I'm air quoting now, is it Crystal, the, the sister-in-law that's not a sister-in-law? She tells Jake that she's off to have her shower. And not long after that, the camera's on Jake following into the cabin I totally missed that. I didn't catch it. I saw it. I clocked it. And I was like, they've either done some masterful editing to make it look that way. But she was like, I'm going for a shower. And then Jake goes because she's sleeping on the couch. So also Leanne quizzes Ben finally and Mm. says, Ben, tell me about Camilla. Camilla Parkerville. (laughs) Camilla (laughs) Parkerville. And uh, Camille is no horse. Like (laughs) she is stunning. Yes. Ben is honest about where they're at and Leanne says, great, I know where they're at. And then she says later to camera, but I'm still going to go there because no regrets. No regrets. So actually they're both wanting to go there and Leanne says they've known each other for a year. I didn't realise it was that long. Yeah, 
And she's also said that it wasn't just all innuendo chat. They did go deep within yep. their DMing. Yes. So let's see. We might have to wait till next week to get to the crux of the matter. Well, I also think like he's had more of a relationship with Leanne than Camille because he he met Camille on that boat. They had that time and True. she was fired. He's had a relationship like conversations with Leanne for a year. Yeah. So yeah, that right. would be really difficult for Ben because I think that he, his heart would be leaning towards Leanne, but he's kind of, oh, Camille came in first to my life. They've already been intimate and, you know, she's hot. Yeah. And we remember what it was like when we were young and we had two people that we fancied and we weren't sure which way to go. Yeah. Remember those times? I do. <laughs> it's the final day of charter. And Rachel wakes up and puts on a coat which has a stain on it, a chef coat, and she says, oh, no, dirty goddamn fucking coat. And then she says, I think my zero fucks ran out. My fucks have been ploughed and there's none to give. Yeah, it set her off, didn't it? Yeah. She's actually, she's done, I think. She's over it. Oh, she's, she's ready for her holiday. But she does then end up in a green visor and a banana award. <laughs> With a Mortimer impression. She turns into a 70-year-old man. <laughs> from where, where do you think Where's she's the from? accent from? I don't know. I want to I'm say gonna Florida. Do, well, can, you do the, can you do the accent? I'm really bad. Hey, Mortimer. <laughs> That's it. Do it. <laughs> Look what I got. I just won myself an award. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> so she heads up to Captain Lee and tries to have a bit of an interchange. Yeah, she keeps it going. It's so funny. It is. I, I don't even know what she says, though. I tried. I, re I rewound. I was like, what is she saying? And he was like looking at her like, this is funny, Rachel, but I'm busy. So <laughs> she's off like, tot. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's breakfast. And Captain Lee has to dock like a boss. In a 30 knot gust. And the current, it's strong. And he's, I don't know much about docking. <laughs> I haven't done my docking course, but I've learned from this episode that those bow lines need to be sucked up and they need to be sucked up quick. He says it to the deck crew and they're not getting them up quick enough. So he can hold that boat there, but they those bow lines need to be done quickly. And he mentions it again in their meeting afterwards yes. just to say, you know, guys, but he does it in a nice way. He does. He does. Mm. He does. He's like, good job. You yeah. didn't crash the boat. So we find out that Jake is actually a charter guest from heaven. Because he hands Captain Lee two fat envelopes. And this team have just received the biggest tip ever in below deck history. They deserve it. 40,000K. $40,000. Hayley says, like, she, she says something about um, he must have, Jake must have to do that everywhere he goes if he goes out with Angel. Like the supplement, <laughs> supplementing, yeah. like, here, sorry about that. You know, sorry, sorry about money. him. Like, sorry about him. Here's another 50K. Sorry about him. Like, I'd, I'd just be $40,000 and that's $3,076 each person. That is a lot. No wonder they go out and party. I'm going to take us back to the boat. It's five o'clock and finally the dinner. The crew are going out and don't they look striking? Like, can you imagine being at that restaurant? They go out to a waterfront restaurant, so they arrive by boat, like, Tony's lying on the front of the boat, so chill. It just looked like a beautiful afternoon. The sun was setting. Just think if you're at this restaurant and you have this crew arrive, I would just be like, look at all of these hot specimens that have just come off this boat. They are very hot specimens, very attractive people. Yeah. Haley and Fraser have a really nice conversation outside at the dinner. Yeah. They go out for a ciggy and Haley just commends Fraser on just being such a patient leader and that she's learnt so much from him and she's really loved working with him. And Fraser says to camera later, Haley is just a slice of everything's okay. Yes. What a beautiful thing to think about someone. How lovely. Fra and she is like that. She is. And you're right. Fraser does have a way with words. Yeah. He's, he's great. And so is she. I want her to be my friend. I want both of them to be my friend. Yeah. And Tyler. Yes. And Ben. Yes. Let's go on a boat all together. <laughs> so they go in the van to the club and Haley's whole vagina falls out getting into the van. <laughs> That's what she says. My whole vagina just fell out. <laughs> She's so funny. Yes, she is. And there's lots of heavy flirting. Between Ben and Leanne. Leanne 
even receives a lap dance from Ben. <laughs> Tony's in hysterics. <laughs> Ross invites two girls into the group. Mm. He just says, hey, girls, what's your name? Come and join the group. And Katie is pissed. Oh, she's mad as hell. I think she's rightfully so to be pissed based on his history. Yeah, I would be too. Yeah. And she says it's disrespectful. I think it's 100% disrespectful. But I also think, Katie, you know who Ross is, what he's like. You can't change people. He's constantly giving you these messages, whether it's drunk Ross or straight Ross, that he really doesn't want much. He just wants a good time and sex at the end. Yeah. And you want more. So you need to get to the point where you realise there's not a match up here. Yeah. They get back to St David. Oh. What happens to poor Tyler? Tyler? He just falls out of the car. <laughs> That's right. The door opens and, and he he's just on the ground. Pops out. Yeah. They get into the boat and Ross and Ben are like, "Oh, let's give the bar a bit of a deck crew clean." <laughs> Meanwhile, Tyler and Haley are downstairs <laughs> making a fucking mess of the crew mess. I love this so much. I can't say enough. This was my favorite part of this episode. Probably my favorite episode so far. It is so messy. They're like naughty kids. Yes. Yeah. And then Fraser, like being the dad. He's coming down and he's like, what's going on? And then they're like, vroom, straight over to the stairs. Can't let dad down. Dad's going to see there's cake everywhere. So, yes. So if you haven't seen the episode, Haley starts. She slices, not a slice. Okay. She chunks off a piece of cake <laughs> and lays it on Tyler's side and says, Tyler, have some cake. It ends up on the floor and then they're just shoving the big chunks of cake into their face. And then next minute it's a full on cake fight it's everywhere tyler's also pissed his pants by the way yes and later Haley does as well <laughs> so there's pee everywhere there's cake everywhere tyler slips on pee or cake we don't know which and smacks his head really hard into yeah. the side of the wall but jumps straight back up again <laughs> yeah they both wet themselves i mean it is messy and funny to it's watch. so funny and so when fraser's down on the stairs and he's trying to come down and see what's happened Haley, Tyler's got him stopped at the stairs and Haley just starts yelling. <laughs> Fraser, there's like one stain. It's just like <laughs> yeah. it's literally nothing. <laughs> oh, I love it so much how yeah. she's just like it's just one stain. It's like literally nothing. There's cake in the fruit bowl. There's icing on the ceiling. There's cake in her hair where she's like lying down and she says she looks like Ariel on crack. Yeah. And she's got it smeared everywhere. All over herself. And she's so funny. They decide or oh, Fraser goes back to bed inaudibly saying something, muttering something as he's going back to his cabin, which is funny. What do they do? What do they decide to do? How do they clean up colour? They what get do they... out a vacuum, vacuum and vacuum up cake. Now, I know you know a lot about vacuuming. <laughs> Have you ever vacuumed cake? Absolutely not. What would you do if one of your boys oh. picked up a vacuum and vacuumed up cake? I'd be so upset because the icing would just be all on the interior of the va- It'd be got The vacuum's broken now. It works, though. you got to get a new Dyson. They, they, they clean up. Oh, well... I think Haley did most of the cleaning. I think Tyler ended up passing out in his bunk. She she talks to everything. She vacuums. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that. She, I was loving her so. I, I think I rewound this part so much because I loved it. Haley was the best. She was the MVP of this episode yes, for me. Yes, a hundred percent. And she gets this chip and <laughs> vacuums it up. Bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I loved when she was rolling around on the floor and she sits up and she looks straight at the camera and she's got cake smeared on her face and she says, all I wanted was some fucking goodnight Doritos. <laughs> it's all she wanted and now look what's happened. God, I'm grateful that we didn't have cameras back in the day when, oh, I mean last when week. When we were doing that. <laughs> rolling around on the floor last week, Lanes, no one had a camera. No, no one saw us. It's the morning after. There are some sore heads. I'd be like, good morning. <laughs> it's not a cakewalk. Oh, you're good. Everyone is well hungover, especially Tyler, Haley, and Fraser. They are fucked. But how good does Fraser look? 
Stunning. He, lo- stunning. He walks out. He's got his sunglasses on. By the way, I love, I would like a pair. What are they, Fraser? And so then he's walking out and his skin's glowing. He looks hot. And yeah. I'm like, I don't look like that when I'm hungover. No, I'm not good for any kind of viewing. Tyler looks how I would feel. <laughs> Pale and sweaty. Yeah, sweaty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they start cleaning and the, all the crew are now called to greet the new guests. Tyler can't find his pants. He's he's in a bit of a state. He's probably still so pissed. Yeah, and so he's got to get the welcome towels sorted. He can't find his pants and he says on the radio to everyone's here, Hayley, can you get the towels because I'm trying to find my pants. And Captain Lee's like, oh, fuck. Glad you found your pants, <laughs> Tyler. We also, before the guests get on, we have a little bit of a snippet from Ross and Katie mm. where um, they have a bit of a chat and once again Ross is saying, I don't want this. I think we're done. And Katie's saying, oh, well, okay, then I'll just change. Okay, well, okay, then you can just go and be flirty and fun and we'll just have fun. So she's completely given up what she wants from him, which is some kind of a commitment and respect. And he's managed to convince her because she says he loves flirting around. So I can decide, okay, that's okay. Let's just have fun. And we all know that's not what she wants. Anyway, I think they should just call it a day. So we're on deck and we can see the new guests coming down the dock. They're absolutely huge and I would be scared like Fraser. Fraser says, all I see is some very slow stampede of protein and muscle incoming. (laughs) Oh, they're massive. They are. And not happy. He said there's no hint of emotion anyway. There's no smiles. Maybe it's the Botox. I can still smile. (laughs) Next week, Carla. Next week, we've got buns and guns. Yeah, that'll so, be fun. Yeah. I they mean, look like they're having a fun time then. They look like the bodybuilders look like they've kind of relaxed a little bit then um, and they're smiling, but it would be hard to relax being that big. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I'm trying to relax, but my body won't because I've got so I'm just much so muscle. big. My muscle impedes my relaxation. My body holds me up. <laughs> I always look ready. So the guests want the crew to put on a show for them, which is buns and guns. And I'm just like, this poor crew. They've got to take shit. They've got to do shit. And it's all for money. It's all, that's the end game. I think that they'll do it really tongue in cheek and it will be funny. Yeah, I do too. We do see Leanne come out like in the shorts for next week and she looks good. Next week also looks a little saucy for Leanne and Ben. Well, do Ben and Leanne find a guest cabin for their final night together? Absolutely. I think we're going to see that. A hundred percent. And I'm here for it. So tune in next week for the finale. It's the last show of the season. Oh, Carla, I'm going to be sad. We've got the reunion. We're going to go on with Below Deck Sailing Yacht. But what else will, would you like us to cover? Yeah, because there might be a few weeks in between that we could do something else while we're waiting. Actually, we'd love to interview Haley, calling Haley, Haley, <laughs> and we'd love to interview Fraser. Haley and Fraser to the aft deck. Anyway, thanks for listening. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Don't forget to support us on buyusacoffee.com forward slash the aft deck pod. Thanks for all the love so far. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. If you'd like to follow us on Insta, come over to at the underscore aft deck underscore pod. Or you can send us an email on the aft deck pod at gmail.com. We'd love to know what you think about the show and what you'd like us to cover for our upcoming seasons. See you all next week. Bye.